Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, part 5 of the $450 Acer Aspire T desktop computer video series, Windows Clone. We are going to be moving Windows 10 from the hard drive to the solid state drive in this computer. Now, if this is the first video in this series you've seen, look in the video description below. There will be a link to the full playlist. The first video is the main computer review, and then we have first boot Windows update, Windows performance review, and then an upgrade video showing the physical installation of a solid state drive and several other components. This video is all about the cloning process to get Windows moved over without having to do a clean reinstall. Your data and your OS will be saved. After this video is going to be another Windows performance review on the SSD with an upgraded graphics card and upgraded RAM. After that, we're also going to have some game performance reviews. So if you have not subscribed to my channel and this is your first time here, welcome. Click that subscribe button below and you'll get notifications when future performance videos come out. Now, in my install video, I had a different SSD in here, but I did discover something interesting, and I ended up mentioning it in the main system review because I filmed these in reverse order. I now do the review last after I've done all of the work with the machine so I can talk about it from an experience point of view. We had an ADATA SU900 SSD in this computer. Unfortunately, this computer has an interesting quirk with the way the BIOS and Secure Boot is set up. The True Image HD software will simply not allow you to clone from a hard drive to an SSD on this specific machine. ADATA, Crucial, and other SSD companies use that software. Samsung, as you can see right here, uses their own custom software. So I have swapped out the ADATA SU900 for a 750 EVO 500 gigabyte solid state drive. I will use that ADATA SU900 in a different machine in a future video. Now we have downloaded and installed the Samsung data migration software, link in the video description below to download that yourself. Please note, if you want to use a Crucial or ADATA or some other brand drive, you need to count on having to do a clean install of Windows 10. Now I've done videos on how to do clean installs of Windows 10 and it's an option. You can make a Windows 10 USB thumb drive, you can then install Windows on an SSD and then it doesn't matter what brand you buy because then they'll all work just fine. This is only trying to move the OS and the data without having to do a reinstall. All right, enough of that. We're gonna click start here. And here's our two drives. The source disk is the two terabyte hard drive that's included with this machine. And you can see here the destination drive is our uh, 750 EVO 500 gig drive. You may be curious why it's a 1.8 terabyte and a 465.8 gigabyte drive. That is because hard drive and SSD companies measure space in base 10 and Windows measures in base 2. It's been this way for 30 plus years. Frankly, it's never going to change. It's just how Windows count space versus how drive companies count space. It's always like this. That's normal. We are going to hit start. Warning, when cloning starts, all data on the target disk will be deleted and cannot be recovered. Yep, that's just fine. We're going to hit yes. At this point, we have to wait. Now, you might be wondering, wait a minute, why can't we just run this same process on the other drives as I mentioned before? The True Image HD software requires the system be rebooted to a special hidden partition that it creates outside of Windows. The problem with this machine is that it will not allow that to happen. I spent a not inconsiderable amount of time trying to make it work more than about an hour and a half of tinkering with BIOS setups, BIOS settings, switching the cables around. The long and short of it is this Acer Aspire T does not want to be cloned outside of Windows. It has to do with the combination of Secure Boot and UEFI BIOS. If this were a custom build machine, if this were, say, the $720 CyberPower machine, I think it'd work just fine. In fact, I'm going to take that ADATA SU900 and I'm going to stick it in that CyberPower machine. And I'll bet you the clone works perfectly because that computer has an industry standard MSI B250 bazooka motherboard and works perfectly well. It's a completely standard off-the-shelf component. This computer is not. One of the downsides to buying something from one of the Tier 1 OEMs such as Acer um, Asus, Dell, HP, is the co components aren't standard. And this is my pitch. 
if you really want a gaming machine that you can upgrade for years, go buy the $720 CyberPower. It's a little bit more money, but you get industry standard off-the-shelf parts rather than custom quirky parts that, you know, cause challenges such as this. Now, this is cloning from within Windows. This is Samsung's special customized clone software. It only works on Samsung's drive. So no, you cannot go download this software and use it on your A-Data drive. It won't let you. It's smart enough. It, it can detect the Samsung drive. But if you buy a Samsung drive and you buy this Acer Aspire T, then you'll be able to run this cloning process. Otherwise, you'll have to do a clean install of Windows. Now, I've skipped ahead and cut out a chunk of that because watching a progress bar gets boring. Once this is complete, a reboot is going to be required. Because of the way the BIOS works with hard drives on this machine, because you cannot manually select a drive to boot from, there's no dynamic reordering of boot drives, you have to open the machine and physically switch the cables. So when this is finished and I reboot, please note that there's going to be a shutdown. And while I can't put that on film here while I'm recording at full screen, I am going to physically switch the cables between the two drives so that the machine will boot from the SSD rather than the hard drive. Now it's just going through a verification process. You'll see it sit at 99% for a while. Don't panic. Let it finish what it's doing. And, well, that was pretty quick. Um, and the data on the source disk has been successfully cloned. At this point, I am going to hit close. And we need to shut down. Now we're going to switch the cables. We'll be back in just a minute. And here we are booted back up into Windows. Now take a look at our storage options. This PC, notice that we only have one drive. It is the 500 gigabyte 750 Evo. Notice the hard drive's missing. This is completely normal and it's very important because you do have an additional step to make in order to make use of your hard drive. You need to right click on your start menu and come up to disk management. When disk management opens, you're going to notice that disk one is offline because it has a signature collision with the current boot drive. This is because we cloned the drive. When you install Windows, a new randomly generated signature is always created. You could install Windows 10,000 times and they would each have a unique signature. These two drives don't. Why? because we absolutely cloned the drives and so they have a unique signature so they cannot both be online at the same time. Now I'm going to show you how to fix that. First things first, we are going to right click on this and bring the drive online. This now shows our Windows partition. Now this does have a drive letter and if we come over here you'll notice that it's now here. You don't want to leave it this way because you now have two copies of Windows online with the same signature. You want to right click on this partition and you want to delete it. This is very, very important. When we click delete partition, yes, make sure that you in fact want to delete it. We'll hit yes and it's now unallocated. Right click on it, choose new simple volume, click next, accept the default of next. Here's a drive letter. We'll call the drive data and we'll hit next and then finish. And it just takes a second to format. And there we go. Now, please note that there are still two very small partitions on this drive. It doesn't matter. You can leave them and ignore them. This is a recovery partition. It's only a gigabyte. It's not a huge amount of space. And trying to remove these manually is more work than I think it's worth for most people. Notice that you now have your two terabyte drive available here. 1.81 terabytes. Windows is here on your C drive. You're good to go. That's it. So please remember that when you first boot in, right click on the start button, disk management, bring the disk one online, delete the big, not the small, but the big partition, create a new one, name it whatever you want, and then you are good to go. The one last suggestion I have for you is to download and install Samsung Magician, the SSD toolbox provided by Samsung. It does a couple of things. First of all, it lets you know that your drive is in good condition, how much total data has been written to it. It lets you know whether or not the trim status is enabled. It should be. That's a good thing. And it also lets you know that your firmware is the latest version. If it was not, there would be a button here and you'd be able to update it to the latest firmware. 
Firmware on a solid state drive is important. Solid state drives actually have processors on them with an actual program that runs. The actual location of the data on the SSD is controlled by the processor on the drive, not by Windows. And so if it's not the latest version, make sure you update it. Furthermore, there's a button here I want to draw your attention to, Rapid Mode. What is Rapid Mode? Rapid Mode provides increased performance at the expense of a small amount of system RAM. If you upgrade the system to 16 gigs, which you should if you are going to put an SSD in, this is not a problem. It'll use about one gigabyte of your system RAM, but it will dramatically improve the performance and the life of your SSD. What it does is it uses that RAM to buffer reads and writes. It acts as an improved RAM uh, cache, but better than what Windows does because it can take incoming writes that are random, reorder them, and send them to the drive in a more orderly fashion. It allows the drive to be more efficient. It reduces the amount of data that's actually written to the drive and improves its longevity. Plus, you get a small performance boost out of it. There's really no reason not to run this, with the only exception being if you not have an uninterruptible power supply. Make sure you have some type, you can buy them for $25 to $30, have an uninterruptible power supply because if data is written to the RAM cache but not purged to the SSD, there is a small risk of the loss of data if you lose power and the computer shuts down before it's flushed. So if you do not have a uninterruptible power supply, then I would leave this deactivated. But if you have one, then I would turn it on. So this has been the cloning process using the Samsung uh, data migration software and the 750 Evo. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, please check out my video description, a link to Amazon.com to buy the computer that I've shown you here. $450 will be down there. A link to Amazon and Newegg will be for the RAM, the SSD options, and the graphics card that I showed in the prior video. If you find these videos helpful and useful, use those links. I would really appreciate it. And then finally, as I said before, the full playlist to all the videos on this computer will be down there as well. Go check them out. Lots of interesting and useful information. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you in my next video.